Hello, everyone. Welcome to session A of the Meeting Your New Legislators session. My name is Michael Goldberg. I'm a reporter with the Washington State Wire. I am very excited to have three at the moment, uh, hopefully five, when all is said and done, new members of the Washington State House of Representatives who were elected this past November. Um, so we're going to have sort of a free-flowing conversation uh, today. We'll pose some questions. I encourage everyone watching in the audience to pose questions as well in the Q&A box and upvote the questions that you like. We will attempt to get to as many questions as we can, probably save those for the last 10 minutes or so. Just to give you a heads up, uh, we are expecting two more members to show up over the course of the hour who are attempting to get logged in right now. Um, so expect them to pop up on screen. Don't be alarmed when that happens. Um, I also would like to say before getting started, um, it's impossible to convene a stakeholder driven event like this without the support of readers, our convening panel and the panelists here today. So thank you very much for being here. Um, so given the fact that the Washington State Wire is a nonpartisan and policy agnostic platform, we really like to begin with just, again, the purpose of this panel, getting to, to know our new members and what they're excited about working on and sort of what drove them to run for office. So if I could just begin, um, we're going to get into that. But first, I'd like you to introduce yourselves, um, tell everyone your party affiliation, um, your district, and your committee assignments. And we'll begin with, how about Representative-elect Berg? Hi, thanks, Michael, for having me on today. So I'm Representative-elect April Berg. I am a Democrat, I'm a Democrat out of uh, Mill Creek. Sorry about that. Um, I, anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm a Democrat out of Mill Creek uh, in the 44th. That includes Mill Creek, Lake Stevens, uh, City of Snohomish, a little bit of Marysville, and a little bit of Everett. Um, we do not have committee assignments yet, so um, I'm as anxious as everyone else uh, to figure out how that falls out. I apologize for that one. Just sort of um, omit that part of your answer. We'll go to Representative-elect um, Gilday next. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Greg Gilday. I am Republican. Uh, I am the elect from uh, Legislative District 10. Uh, so that includes all of Island County and the best parts of Snohomish and Skagit County. Uh, I live on Camino Island and I work in Stanwood. Great. Next, we will move on to Representative Elect uh, Clicker. Let's go to. Hello, I'm uh, Representative Black Clipper from the 16th uh, Legislative District. Uh, my family has been in the, this region. Uh, I'm from the Walla Walla Valley. Uh, my family migrated into the area in 1861. And so I'm a Republican. Um, and really, it's uh, my goal is to work with uh, members on both sides of the aisle. I'm uh, really uh, anxious to, to work with the legislators. So it'll be interesting to see see what happens during this this uh, this year being virtual. For sure. We're all waiting to see how that shakes out. So thank you for being here. Um, and finally, welcome Representative Hackney. And uh, I don't know if you heard the question, just uh, your district, introduce yourself, your party uh, affiliation. All right. So David Hackney, representative elect in the 11th uh, district. I live in Tequila. The district encompasses uh, the Georgetown uh, area of South Seattle, all of Tequila, uh, about three quarters of Renton, a sliver of Kent, and some parts of some parts of uh, unincorporated King County. Um, yeah, excited to uh, to be here. Obviously, part of the Democratic Caucus, and uh, looking forward to working with everyone uh, uh, in this next session. Well, we're excited to have you and to have all of you here. So, I just want to. Um, get into your thoughts on the upcoming session. You were elected, each of you, in November. Now you're sort of heading in to the session at uh, a time when so many different uh, issues um, are in need of being 
uh, addressed in Washington state. So I just want to know, I'm curious, how are you thinking about this session, um, sort of the session that will be in comparison to the session that you expected when you perhaps first decided to run for office? How are you thinking about your your first session um, in sort of this unique context of the year that is 2020 and soon to be uh, 2021? So we'll begin back with Representative Elect Berg. And yeah, that's a great question, because I think um, for all of us, um, it probably was different, right? We came in uh, knew, knowing that we wanted to run and represent, and then we had this public health crisis uh, come out and really change everything. Um, for me, I'm a school board director, so I look at a lot of things through the, the lens of education. Um, and for me, it was really personal, not just running during a public health crisis, but having my daughter's high school be the first high school in the nation with a COVID positive student. So that really shaped, uh, you know, the way I looked at things, the way I looked at this crisis and the way I ran my campaign, which was safety was paramount. Um, I think overnight we all became mini epidemiologists on school boards, unfortunately, trying to figure out what to do, when, how. And of course, safety is paramount. But a couple of things that it really put into perspective was the need for basic services. So for healthcare, uh, housing as a truly a human right, but then also food security and the need for broadband um, as not a luxury anymore, but an absolute necessity to keep our kiddos learning continuously and our senior citizens connected to loved ones. Um, so it was it, it changed everything. But I, I truly believe it's put um, a lot of things into perspective so that we can lead better. Great. We'll go to Representative-elect Gilday next. Representative-elect Gilday? We'll go to you next. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. So I think Representative Berg said it said it just spot on when uh, she says that it just changes the whole perspective of things. Uh, you know, I look at this as, you know, going into it originally, I was looking at it as this is going to be a, uh, a relationship driven uh, pursuit. And frankly, it's just going to be really hard to establish those types of relationships over Zoom. It's just, it's not as easy as, uh, you know, I was uh, just before the session began, uh, you know, Michael, you asked me if, uh, or you asked both uh, Representative Berg and I, if we'd met each other. And it's like, yeah, we've been on some Zoom calls together, but I haven't had the opportunity to meet her, shake her hand. And a lot of those in-person uh, relationships and, and, and the in-person communication uh, is a lot of what this job really needs. So it's it's going to be interesting having it over Zoom. It's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, I, I, I joke with people that we're going to be the uh, uh, the class of legislators that's going to be in our, our sophomore year and still need to ask where the restrooms are. And so it's, uh, um, you know, it's really interesting, but, uh, uh, you know, we just need to kind of roll with it and address the safety issues and address uh, uh, the crisis that we're going through. Great. Uh, we will go to Representative Elect Clicker next. But first, before we do that, I see that uh, Representative Elect Barno has entered the room. We're glad that you sorted out some some tech issues, I understand. So if you could just, um, Representative Elect, introduce yourself, tell us your party affiliation and what district you represent. Sure, um, my name is Peter Barno. I represent uh, the 20th legislative district, which is South Thurston County, most all of Lewis County, uh, Cowlitz County and down into Clark County. Uh, I am a city councilor here in Centralia. I'm an attorney um, and uh, really excited to, to, to be here and be a part of the, this, uh, this webinar, finally. <laughs> Well, we're happy to have you. Uh, Representative Let Clicker, we'll go back to you for the last question. Yeah, absolutely. So I cover the, as I said, the 60th legislative district, and, and that, that includes a part of the Tri-Cities and Southern Benton County and Wawa County and Columbia County. The thing that we have found is, is right now, business recovery is the biggest thing. And so when I originally was planning on running, I was looking at uh, trying to find ways of, of uh, decreasing uh, taxes, not finding new taxes, creating some type of business incentives. Uh, there are so many regulations, so many different taxes that businesses have, and it's the small business that's hiring the, the employees. Right now, with the COVID issue going on, we've, 
we've lost over 93,000 employees that, that have gone unemployed. And so many of those have, are working for small business, primarily restaurants and, and hospitality. And, and that's what, you know, 80, $80 million a month of revenue comes in from the hospitality and restaurant associations. And there's a lot of people out of work. We have to find that balance of our safety and health. But, but when taxes can't be paid, that's because people are unemployed. People aren't out buying things. We've got to find a way, both sides of the aisle, to create some type of, of uh, business incentives, uh, cost sharing programs, whatever it may be that falls under the Constitution. So I think it's really important that we, we can get our, our economy back up and going again. It's going to be really tough because there's a lot of people out there hurting and a lot of unemployed people and, and people have never, never experienced that before. And so I think it's important that we find a way that we can do it at the same time balancing our budget uh, uh, in the state. Great. Next, we will go to Representative-elect Hackney. Oh, you're on mute, Representative-elect. Sorry there about that. Go. I had a lot of trouble both getting in, now I'm having trouble speaking. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, I think that obviously uh, when I ran, the pandemic was not on my radar at all. And now that we are in this public health crisis that's created an economic crisis, uh, it, it's basically laser focused me on economic recovery and also protection of vulnerable communities during this pandemic. So I think it has changed uh, both my legislative priorities. Um, there's been a lot of uh, negative impact in my district uh, that I think uh, needs to get addressed, um, both from, uh, uh, like I said, uh, stimulating the economy, um, uh, small businesses, particularly restaurants and healthcare providers, as well as providing um, income support to uh, and workers who have lost their jobs, and also thinking about workers who have lost their health insurance uh, because they have lost their jobs. I think all of that uh, needs to be addressed uh, immediately. And I look forward to working with people on both sides of the aisle to address these concerns. Great. And Representative Electa Barno, I'm not sure if you heard the question, so I will repeat it for you. Um, your co panelists were just responding to um, the idea that this session might not be the session that you had in mind when you first decided to run for office, whenever that was. So, can you just talk about um, sort of what the challenges posed by 2020 and what uh, sort of upcoming challenges you foresee, how that has sort of forced you to sort of pivot um, and reshape your vision uh, heading into your first session. Absolutely. So when I announced in February, uh, COVID was something we heard about, but really weren't impacted by yet. Um, but when I ran, one of the, one of the kind of uh, foundational pillars I ran on was economic development. Uh, in Centralia, here where I live, 100% of our students are on free or reduced lunch. Now, we are in a vulnerable community, a community with a lot of poverty. And so what COVID has unfortunately done is magnified that problem. Um, I have participated in a lot of different organizations like United Way, and they've always had this goal of lifting 30% of families out of poverty by 2030. Well, those goals are now set further back into the importance of trying to uh, protect uh, these, uh, these families and small businesses and these students is even greater. What, what I didn't anticipate was, you know, the, the real strong impact that uh, the shutdowns of COVID-19 are gonna have on our, our children and, and our uh, student population. Uh, these kids in our community, my, my, I have a second grader and a fourth grader, my wife's a teacher and I volunteer in a lot of schools. Uh, these kids are not only victims, but they're witnessing uh, divorce and domestic violence and drug addiction and mental health issues that are gonna uh, impact our community far, far, far beyond uh, 2020. And if we are serious as a community that we want to end intergenerational poverty, then I think it's gonna be really important that we have more early identification and early treatment for some of these, these issues. So while a lot of, of my issues didn't change because of COVID, boy, did they, were, were they magnified uh, by it. And, and lastly, it's really just continuing to talk about Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. 
everybody on this uh, on this panel and, and and all 49 senators and 98 representatives want a better community so the question is we all want the same thing how do we get there how do we uh, reconnect and continue communicating again where we often see people digging in their heels and running to their corners and we, we need to stop that great so I brought all of you to the 2021 session and we're going to touch on that more um, but before we get to forward looking, I want to take a step back and ask each of you, what was the biggest surprise that you encountered on the campaign trail? You could just name a, a moment, whether it be about running for office, about interacting with voters, um, learning more about your district. Um, it's open-ended, but just what was the most surprising uh, sort of thing that you learned or um, thing that happened to you on the campaign trail? And we'll start with Representative Lechtberg. I sense there's an order there. Um, so there were a lot of surprises. I think when you run during a, a once in a lifetime pandemic, you can't be anything but surprised each and every morning. Um, I think for me, uh, the surprise was really the, um, I think Representative Gilday mentioned it, you know, thinking that we couldn't reach out and not having those personal connections, but actually being able to achieve those on Zoom. It, it took a little effort um, and we had to really reinvent the wheel in some ways, but being able to connect with folks in new ways and, um, you know, Zoom, as much as it's confining, it also allows for accessibility. And so even as I look at um, things like school board meetings, and community forums, all of a sudden you've got what normally would maybe five people might show up on a, on a Thursday night. Now all of a sudden you've got 30 or 40 or sometimes 90 people showing up to these meetings because they're accessible via Zoom. They can sit in their living room, listen, communicate. Um, so we found that in the campaign trail, more people were connecting where they were in a convenient fashion. Also doing things on Zoom allowed us to house, much like this conference, house our media. Um, so people could connect with us later. And so I would get emails maybe a week later after talking about housing and they'd say, oh, you know, that was a great conversation. I'm like, huh, was it? And then I think, oh, you saw the video. You went to our YouTube channel, you went to our Facebook page. And so it was really exciting to see more people connect in new ways. Um, and the last little bit I'll add, cause I think a lot of folks know about my campaign. The biggest surprise for me was um, being in a horrific car accident on primary night on my way to sign wave. And so um, the outpouring of support and love was huge. Uh, me and my husband, of course, are, are safe and, and I'm on the road to recovery, but, um, but that was literally the biggest surprise. That is quite a, a surprise indeed. And we're happy that you are healthy um, and here today. So thank you um, for sharing that. And next we will go to representative elect Gilday. So I think for me, uh, the, the biggest surprise was how many people uh, had never spoken with the representative or never talked or seen the representative. Uh, and during the primary and during the general election, I, you know, I made thousands of phone calls, knocked on thousands of doors, and uh, I can't tell you how many times people would say, "So is this is this really Greg?" Yes, and then they'd ask me to prove it, and I just kind of be like, "Okay, how do you want me to prove it?" But it's a, uh, um, it it was interesting how many people hadn't ever. Uh, been able to interact with a representative before. And it was nice to see that there are new ways to, uh, for people to interact with them, uh, as uh, Representative Berg was saying, via Zoom, via uh, more phone calls and things of that nature. So I think it's good that more people are getting involved. Great, next we'll go to Representative Le Clicker. Yeah, I think, I think the whole, this, the the surprise to me and what what I didn't realize I'd run into would really had to do with the whole COVID epidemic. Uh, you know, the started my campaign planning on on going out, shaking hands, meeting people, and we really never could jumpstart that uh, just because of the the COVID issue. Being more in a rural area, even though we have all all entire cities. Um, a lot of areas you can't have the the broadband. It's just too slow. So we didn't really have too many too many Zoom meetings whatsoever. Um, the times I did get to, be, to go out, a lot of the people were, were concerned. They didn't. Did, there was a lot of proper spacing. Uh, 
you really could not have, we had a hard time connecting with, with uh, all of our constituents. That was both sides, both my, the, the person that I was running against and myself. So it was really difficult getting out, getting to know people, uh, helping them uh, understanding the issues that they were dealing with. And so uh, I think, you know, we've kind of uh, gradually learning how to virtually uh, zoom in and, and, uh, and meet people that way, but it's still not the same. So hopefully we can resume back to, to meeting people on a personal basis and get, getting to know people. Primarily uh, both sides of the aisle in, in Olympia, it would be nice to, to get there and, and uh, uh, work legislation one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you, Representative-elect Clicker. Next we'll go to Representative-elect Hackney. I think um, something that uh, uh, surprised me and perhaps it shouldn't was the uh, absolute focus on fundraising and just how much time and effort in the campaign was spent on, on that one area where I thought that, uh, you know, I would be out in the streets, you know, knocking on doors, more attending events, and that the primary, uh, you know, objective in most days was um, some form of f phone calls or texting to raise money, which was, was probably the least fun part of the campaign for me. I would imagine. Next, we will go to Representative-elect Abarno. So um, I'll probably uh, echo um, what all the other panelists said, except for obviously Representative Bergen. I'm glad to hear that you're on the road to recovery. That is just a, a tr such a traumatic experience. And so it's, it's good to know that your, your family is, is safe on the road to recovery. But for, for me, you know, as a, what I didn't expect is, you know, as a small business owner, a husband and a father, you know, of students, you know, politicians and elected officials on the campaign trail always talk about, you know, we're in this together and, and I, I feel your pain You hear all this rhetoric, but, you know, I, I really did. I mean, small businesses were struggling. I was scared. I was talking to my staff about, all right, so here's what we're doing to help protect your jobs. Here's what we're working on as, as, as a father um, with with young children at home, scared, starting to build anxiety over what's going on, trying to turn off the TV so that they, that they don't have to carry that burden on their shoulders. A wife who's a teacher who's now teaching by Zoom and they're all learning this new process. For me, what, what really impacted me on this campaign trail, which may not happen again, is that we're all in this pandemic, we're all in this massive emergency, and we were all feeling a lot of the exact pain that our constituents were feeling. And, you know, you couldn't go door to door. You couldn't give a hug. You couldn't shake hands. And so, you know, it was hard to, to hear some of the emotional stories and see the tears and, and also go home with that burden and worry too, which probably doesn't happen on a lot of campaign trails. So for me, that really had the most impact. Great, so I wanna take us back to the 2021 session. Um, and I will start with you, Representative-elect Abarno, to change up the order a bit. Um, is there a member in the current legislature that you are most excited about uh, working with in either chamber, either side of the aisle, um, one member that you're most excited about teaming up with? Um, well, I mean, I think if it advances anything, I would say JT Wilcox. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, it's really interesting to see um, the the House members, the 98 House members. And what, what I did is I went through and looked at all the House members that were going to be there. Um, just the diversity, um, the backgrounds, uh, where they all come from, where they all represent. I, I can't say that there's one representative that I'm most excited to work with. Um, I, I'm really excited to work with all of them and, and learn from them because, you know, whether you're like me here from Centralia or you're in Walla Walla or, or you're up in, in, in Puyallup, wherever, um, you're bringing such a unique perspective. And that's why it's so important that the legislature meet, uh, collaborate and communicate to find solutions that, that really uh, solve problems throughout the state. How about you, Representative-elect Hackney? Is there one member or a group of members in particular that you are most excited to work with in Olympia? Um, it's, it's not one member, 
But um, we do um, in the in the Democratic caucus now have uh, both a black member caucus and a member of color caucus. Member of color caucus is a is a third of the Democratic caucus, and I, I look forward to uh, to working with that group as well as the black member caucus, which is the largest uh, at eight, at the largest has ever been in the history of the Washington Legislature. Mm -hmm. All right. Representative-elect Clicker, I will pose that question to you as well. Who are you excited about working with? You know, I really haven't, I never really thought of it that way. And, and I look at, you know, trying to find new new members that I can work with. Um, I, I know, uh, know a number of them, primarily on the Republican side of the aisle. I know one or two of them on the, on the Democrat side of the aisle. Uh, but really, I don't have any particular groups people I, I'm looking forward to. I think I, I think we, we need, again, it goes back to uh, meeting people one-on-one -on -one or virtually, and, and it's been really unfortunate. We can't do it. We, we, we were not able to do our orientation uh, in Olympia. We, we had to meet each other just like we're doing here, and it's really difficult to be able to get to know people, see, look at them, you know, you know see things eye to eye, and and so I, I think it's it's going to be a learning curve trying to, to figure out who who we're going to work with and who we work with best. So uh, kind of trying times. Representative Elect Gilday, how about you? So I, I would say just as a group, the the people I'm looking forward to working with the most are the incoming class of freshmen. Uh, because it's, I think we have uh, a unique bond of going through this the first time together, and uh, and I'm hoping that we can kind of lean on one another in order to, uh, you know, work our way through this system, figure out what's going on, and uh, and support one another. So the incoming the incoming representatives. Great, and finally, Representative Elect Berg. Yeah, I, um, I, you know, I kind of echo that in a way. Um, I am very much looking forward to looking uh, to working with the freshman class, um, and partly because of that shared experience, and I think partly because we understand um, the role that safety is going to have to play in everything we do. Right, keeping our families safe, keeping um, our constituents safe. Safety being that paramount thing, I think this freshman class understands that because we had to do that on the campaign trail while introducing ourselves to a community. So um, I'm looking forward to that, but I will be specific. Um, I'm looking forward to working with my seatmate. I have the great privilege of being the seatmate of the amazing representative John Lovick. Um, to have him as a seatmate and a mentor and being able to watch him in action, I am uh, over the moon. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Great. So next, um, we touched on this uh, a bit earlier when we discussed what each of you would really like to focus on uh, this session. But since COVID-19 and legislation around COVID-19 will be um, the dominant theme this session, I'm curious, the pandemic has such far-reaching implications across so many different issue areas. Can each of you name a particular area that you feel maybe has been sort of overlooked um, or is not being um, sort of talked about enough um, in the policy conversation uh, amid so many different challenges, again, that the pandemic poses? So we'll start with Representative-elect Berg for this one. Yeah, so I think um, for me, and it, I really, it depends on who's having that conversation about challenges and at what time and in what community. Um, I say that because it's hitting communities maybe differently um, in different in in, uh, in other ways. So for instance, you'll see some of our schools reopening in hybrid models, depending on their counties um, and other schools being in complete shutdown. Um, so that said, I think what's not being paid enough attention to are the intersections. So I will speak directly um, to the policy around food security security, uh, housing, and education, that intersection, and, and we've seen it before as policymakers and how it affects um, our students who are on free and reduced lunch, but also our kids in transition who are uh, homeless students, folks like that. But we need to, to work specifically to get folks housed, 
fed um, and their social emotional learning needs of our students met. So I think that intersection, um, I was happy to, to hear uh, Representative Arbarno kind of speak to that in his district and the vulnerable communities. Um, and I had no idea that Centralia was 100% free and reduced lunch. So that's, that's a learning moment for me. Um, but I think we need to have more conversations about how all those things intersect um, and, and what it does to our vulnerable communities, specifically our kiddos. Great. Representative-elect Gilday. I think one of the big issues that's going to be at the forefront this year is just access to broadband. Uh, my wife teaches second grade, so she's uh, got a whole classroom of uh, kiddos on Zoom every day. And, uh, and I have two boys that are in middle school, so they're on Zoom all day every day. And it's just the, the lack of good access to broadband. And it's not just any broadband because it's like, uh, for example, I'm at my office today and my, you might notice that my connection is a little bit laggy. Um, this is the best broadband that I have right now. I couldn't do this at home because uh, the connections that I have aren't, aren't big enough to, uh, to handle a meeting like this. And so uh, with, with so many kids at home that don't have access, to broadband period or access to broadband that is is enough to excuse me to support uh, what they're needing to go through I think you're going to see a big push for that because uh, you know we need that in order to support education so it's like how are we going to get there are we going to have public private partnerships how are we going to get the broadband pushed out to all the communities in this state great next we'll go to representative elect clicker Yeah, I think uh, Representative Leckberg and Gilde both hit her on the hit her on the nose. I I'd like to expand a little bit. I, I think that um, the education system, primary education system, is is really taking a hit on this. He's, the kids are not. It's really difficult. It's difficult on the teachers. Uh, they're splitting up their time. They're trying to adjust to the the kids uh, via uh, computer and and virtual and, and the kids, um, you know, they, they have a place to go. And, and it's really tough with the parents that, that are working at this time where their kids are at home, uh, you know, they, they can't follow up and they, their kids aren't in school. So I think that's, that's an area that's really struggling right now. And I think we're going to see some of the repercussions from that at the same time. Um, you know, the, so many of these businesses, I, I'm really concerned. Some of these businesses are not going to recover, and and, uh, and and so many of the business owners, I'm starting to hear of of uh, uh, various people, take, you know, suicides, uh, depression, uh, and, and so it just it just expands going further. And I think we really need to hone in on this. And and, and as we go into legislation, what can we do to take care of some of these people? We got to get the economy going again. We've got to get people back to work, we've got to get small businesses started up. Um, and so we have a mess in front of us and we really need to prioritize and take care of those issues so we can take care of the other issues down the road. Great, Representative-elect Hackney, we will go to you. Well, one area I think that I'm a bit concerned about that's gonna get overlooked is um, investing in our uh, continued invest in our infrastructure. So not only are those good paying jobs that the uh, public sector uh, supports, but also, you know, by failing to make uh, good investments, it's just going to get that much more expensive down the road, um, whether it's roads, bridges, and other, um, and broadband is also considered infrastructure, but these problems don't get better with time, they get worse. And so even in a time of a financial um, crisis, um, we have to find ways to continue to invest in infrastructure, both from a public safety perspective and just from a cost perspective. Um, not to mention uh, uh, trade uh, education. We do not have enough skilled tradesmen in order to complete the capital projects that are necessary for this area, which means we're gonna be in the odd um, predicament of importing skilled trade laborers uh, when we have um, people out of work or underemployed in this community. So continuing to invest in uh, infrastructure and capital projects, as well as uh, technical and trade skill education is something that is uh, as important as economic recovery during this pandemic. 
Great, and we'll close this question with Representative Electa Barno. Yeah, when you're closing these questions, it, everybody's taken everything I wanted to say. So, uh, but 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 I but I uh, I guess generally, I mean, on infrastructure, I completely 100% agree. Um, you know, a lot of these um, municipalities, and coming from a, a city council point of view, we have such aging infrastructure. Even if the state were to say we want you to build 50 units of low-income housing, our sewers, wastewater, we wouldn't be able to do it just based on infrastructure. So I think reinvestment in upgrading infrastructure is not only going to help to meet some of the educational, social, and health needs down the road. Um, what I've heard too, um, especially from Representative Berg, which I think that this incoming class can do a better job um, with is, is when we're, we're investing in things or we're talking about solving one problem, we should be dealing with these intersecting issues so that we can really deal with them. And, and broadband's a perfect example. Um, in 2019, the, you know, the Office of Broadband was created and they had matching grants for $2 million. Well, we all know $2 million on a matching grant, $4 million isn't gonna build you much of anything. So if we're really serious about solving problems, then we really need to actually solve the problems and not just kind of grab the headlines and say, we invested in it. When we really didn't, we're not solving anything. So I think this class most certainly uh, campaigning in this type of year have seen how all these issues interrelate and how we can solve multiple issues at the same time. Well, Representative Electa Barno, I will give you uh, the first shot at this next question, which comes from Maria in the audience. She asks, what committees are you interested in serving on? Uh, you know, I get asked this question probably three times a day. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty happy to serve on any committee. I mean, I have uh, such varied interests. Um, there, you know, one committee that I've had an interest in um, is, is capital budget. And, and one reason for that is that uh, the, the Chehalis Basin has a uh, catastrophic flooding issue. And, and we know that mitigating catastrophic flooding, uh, which has cost billions of dollars in damage over the years, um, it needs to be solved and it will likely go through a capital budget process. Um, and I've worked on flooding issues uh, for, for many, many years at the local level and, and worked with our state delegation. So um, capital budget's one that I'd be interested in. Um, but honestly, uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to get on any uh, committee uh, that can make a difference in, in my community. So, Representative-elect Hackney, what committees are you interested in serving on? Uh, I'm going to be honest. Um, uh, we just received our committee assignments, and I, I cheated and looked. So um, I have been assigned to the uh, Capital Budget Committee, the uh, Public Safety Committee, and the Transportation Committee. Well, it appears we are breaking um, some news on this um, this panel. So Representative-elect Clicker, assuming you have or have not seen it, which ones are you or are you interested in serving on? Well, I'll, uh, I did not uh, get to see it like uh, Representative Hackney did. So uh, I, not really in any priority, but I did choose uh, rural development, uh, agriculture, natural resources, actually is my number one priority. But really any of them, energy and environment, uh, transportation, and uh, uh, labor and workplace standards is really those are the committees. Uh, that's kind of what I've, I've uh, dealt with for, for so many years, and I, I would fit well, but, but uh, kind of like uh, uh, Representative Elect Arbano, I, I uh, would would uh, take on any any of them, uh, whatever is presented to me. Representative Elect Gilday, how about you? Representative Elect Gilday, can you hear? So I've done pretty much any committee because there are so many varying issues that uh, are of interest. And so I, I think you can really, I can hear you. Yeah, you're a little choppy. Hear um, me? But I, yes, we can now. Go ahead.
All right, I think we're experiencing a bit of a audio issue with Representative Elect Gilday, so we will come back to Representative Elect Gilday and we'll go to Representative Elect Berg. Yeah, my answer is simple. I'm a team so, player. Um, I don't think, I know we're. Because oh, I think sorry. the committee is going to. All right. I think. He yeah, I think. I think you said any committee. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, so I was, I was just going to say, I'm a team player. I'm kind of in the same boat. I don't, I think we get so many emails. I don't think we have gotten those lists yet. I know Rep Hackney's like, oh, but I think, I know we've um, probably all submitted what we want, but I think, I don't think there's any breaking news here. <laughs> So I just wanted to clarify that, but um, but I think uh, you know, of course, education being my background, I would love to serve in that way, serve my community more. But honestly, I'm a team player. I think we all are, um, and I'm sure you know when it all gets sorted out, um, they will you know let us know. But I know emails are coming fast and furious. It's hard to know who's on what when. <laughs> yes, the inbox um, is ever expanding. So we will move on to um, perhaps some more sort of philosophical question. Um, there is a fundamental uh, sort of divide um, that is theorized by some folks in the way that, that legislators across really all levels of government uh, approach sort of the core mission um, that drives their work. On the one hand, you have some folks, some legislators who feel that it is their job to ascertain the sort of consensus views uh, among their constituents and then to represent those views and their votes and in the way they craft policy. And then, then there are other legislators who view their mission as to enter the legislative body and sort of use that position to, to drive public opinion toward the uh, policies that they feel would be most helpful to their constituents. So if I could have each of you sort of respond to that dichotomy, do you consider your primary mission as a legislator as to represent the views of your constituents as they are, or to try to have conversations and change those views um, in order to achieve the policy outcomes that you feel would be the most um, helpful? So on that one, we will start with representative elect uh, clicker. Um, hopefully I got the question right. Um, I, you were kind of blanking out there, um, in and out. So I didn't get the whole question, but I think I'm, I'm pretty sure really I, I'm going to follow what the grassroots is who elected me within the constituents of my district. So I really have to follow with, with what my district has asked me to vote on. And, and, uh, it, it basically follows that pretty much the majority of the ideology. Uh, I will look at, I, I will look at, at um, uh, the other people that did not vote for me and their ideology and, 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 and weigh in on that because I, I believe I represent everybody in my district and I have to, I have to, to consider it. And, uh, and so that uh, I'm not necessarily going to promote any type of agenda whatsoever, but I am going to follow uh, what what the, the grassroots community and, and my constituents are, and then try to find that balance. Great. Uh, Representative Elect Berg, we'll go to you next. Let me know if you would like me to repeat the question. Yeah, no, um, I think I, I understood pretty clearly, um, you know, our constituents, what, um, what they want versus, you know, us convincing them of what we think they should want um, is kind of how I heard it. And I think it's a great question, honestly. Um, and I think it's a great question specifically because of the growth we're seeing, I think, in all of our communities. And with that growth um, comes a diversity in people, backgrounds, lived experiences, and of course, opinions. So I will say that I am cognizant of that growth. I'm cognizant of our increasing diversity, but I will always represent my constituents the way they want to be represented. 
Um, I love the fact, I'm going to say this out loud, and I'm sure I'll regret it. I love the fact that we run every two years um, because that keeps us honest and it keeps us in touch with our communities. Um, and so I say that, of course, as a freshman, talk me in a few years, I might have another story. But but I think it, it makes us be in connection. It makes us represent because if we don't, guess what? It's not long until they can choose someone who does. So I, I personally uh, want to represent the needs and the desires of my community, but I always want to be cognizant that they're changing because the demographics are changing and we're growing. Great. How about you, Representative-elect Hackney? What are your thoughts on this uh, sort of dichotomy? Well, I don't see it as an either or. I think it depends on the uh, on the position. Um, I am the uh, representative. It is a, um, uh, uh, you know, my job is to represent uh, the, 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 my community to the best of my ability. It is not necessarily majority rule though. So my community is not going to be necessarily monolith on every issue. And the majority may not, in my opinion, have the best uh, uh, view. So I think that I've been asked to use my judgment um, to look out for the best interest and weigh the costs and benefits. And if the majority of my community and I are at odds, um, depending on the importance of the issue, yeah, I will definitely try to persuade them, but I will have to vote um, in a way that I think is best for the district. And if you know, if the if that means that the majority doesn't want me as a representative, I totally understand that. But um, my job is not to um, uh, placate to the majority; it is to do what's best, what I think is best for the district, and that's what I'm going to do. Great, Representative Elect Barno. Yeah, I would agree with Representative uh, Hackney, and, and obviously everything that was said, um, you know, that's one of those issues that comes up, you know, even as a city councilor, you sit here and, you know, you don't want to put your thumb to the wind and just and just bend to the majority, but you also, it's important to not live in an echo chamber. You know, even in my district, you know, I, I won with 71%, but that 29%, you need to be, you need to have an open door, you need to be able to listen and, and, and I think that the, the people vote for you, not only for what you represent and your stance on issues, but your judgment on issues that they may not have even considered, you may not have even talked about on the campaign trail. They're also electing someone who's going to use good judgment on all those issues. So I really agree that it's a mixture on what the issue is, when it comes up. And so uh, I think it's a little mixture of both, but most certainly uh, not living in an echo chamber where you surround yourself with people who are just patting you on the back and you're not actually listening to people who may not have voted for you, but you still represent them. Great. And we will close with Representative-elect Gilday. We'll try to be give him some time here for the lag to catch up. But Representative-elect Gilday, if you can hear me, um, the question is posed to you. All right, it appears we do not so have any So I'm the other of one by a party and by less than a thousand votes in my district. Uh, so for me, keep going, Representative Elect, if you can hear. Yeah, we can now. Okay, so what I was saying is. Okay, so I'm on the other end of the spectrum as Representative Babarno, where he won by a wide majority. I won by under a thousand votes. So, in my district, I think it's really important for me in order to uh, to gauge it. You know, obviously, I have my own thoughts, uh, but it's really important to have open and honest conversations with everybody. Uh, you know, during the campaign, people ask me a lot. Uh, you know, as a Republican running for office and you're likely going to be in the minority, are you going to be able to work with the Democrats? And, and my answer to them was, well, I've been married to one for the last 20 years, so I've had lots of practice. And so I, I plan on uh, continuing that, having the open door policy. And in this session, obviously, that's a uh, uh, figurative term. So I'll have an open Zoom policy. Uh, that, uh, you know, I'll be talking with everybody, though when I when it comes right down to it, I have to vote my conscience and, and what I think is going to be best for my district and my state. 
Great. So we have about two minutes left. Um, so I will close with an audience question, which I think is the most hard hitting question that will be posed yet. Um, what would your grandmother describe as a success for you at the end of your first year? And this question comes from Kathy. So for that one, I will begin with the representative elect Berg. <laughs> Okay, I love that question <laughs> um, because it's a great true north to have as we're serving and leading in our communities. And so I think um, what my grandmother would describe as a success um, for my first session would be that we all stay healthy. Um, my grandmother doesn't live in the state. I have not been able to see her um, in over a year. Um, and it literally breaks my heart every day. But I know that safety um, and taking the measures we need to be safe, not just within our own homes, but within the legislature, and of course, within our communities is the paramount duty. So at the end of the session, if we've all stayed safe, made the right decisions to, um, to get the vaccine out in an equitable way, to get our businesses back open, to get our school kids back in school, but, but if we've had a session where at the end of it, I could maybe get on an airplane and see her, she will have seen that as a success. Great, Representative-elect Clicker. You know, uh, both my grandmothers have been gone for, for quite some time. Uh, but I, uh, if I look back at it, I, I campaigned on protecting our custom, our culture, and our economic stability of our district and of our state. Uh, and, and there are so many customs and cultures that, that we practice throughout the state of Washington. But in my area, it, it's uh, because it's rural, uh, because we... We, we operate a little differently. It, we, we think differently, but at the same time, more people are coming into our area. I know my grand, both gra my grandmothers would, would say, you know, protect, protect our custom, protect our culture, what we do, but it, for the most part, protect, you know, our economic stability so we can survive. Uh, and I will throw in one, uh, something in there, just what Representative Blackburn said, and that is the safety of our citizens and the health. It is important. We all have to flow together and work together uh, so we don't we don't uh, neglect the other one. Great, thank you. Um, I believe we still have Representative-elect Gilday on audio. So Representative-elect, if you can hear me, the question is posed to you. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, you know, both of my grandmothers are have also been gone for some time now, but uh, uh, I think that what they would see as a success is, uh, were you able to move the state forward and not compromise on your principle or character? Uh, you know, they, they would be more uh, inclined to say, it was a success if you can uh, uh, look your neighbor in the eye at the end of the session and say, hey, look, I did my best and uh, to move the state forward and to improve the lives, uh, both uh, safety, economically, uh, all, of all that for, for the constituents in the, in the district and in the state. Thank you. Representative-elect Hackney. Yeah, both of uh, my grandmothers have also long since passed, but uh, my father's sister recently turned 90, and the advice that she gave me was to um, uh, work hard, uh, do your best, and put the interests of your constituents above your own. And that's what I that's what I would look at as success as well. And um, I think my grandmothers would agree. Thank you. And finally, Representative Elect Abarno. Yeah, I think my grandparents uh, and my grandmother, and that was a great question by Kathy. I was watching it, and I think that was I was hoping that would be asked. But you know, my 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 grandmothers would probably uh, say that did you did you show respect to your colleagues? Uh, did you legislate with honor? Uh, and and were you working uh, for every single person in your district or were you working to get reelected? And if you were working uh, to represent and lift uh, your community up, then I think they would be very proud of me. And that's how I would like to hopefully my end of my first year to be seen as. Great. Well, we are officially out of time. That was a lovely conversation. Thank you to all of you for coming and thank you to our attendees for watching. We are excited to keep up and track um, all five of you in the 
upcoming session. Um, and we hope to see you at this event next year. So thank you very much. Thank you.